okay hello guys so welcome to our lesson number two on our linear algebra series so uh, in this uh, lesson now uh, we are going to start uh, putting uh, our matrices that we discussed yesterday into algebraic form you see so um, yesterday we did or in our previous lesson we did uh, an introduction to matrices where we looked at everything in a more numeric form and we learned uh, different uh, types of matrices and also how to do some operations with matrices uh, so today we want to uh, actually do almost like the same thing but uh, in a more algebraic form you see so uh, that's when now we are going to start looking at matrices in a more abstract uh, language you see uh, so the first thing that we're going to do uh, in the beginning is to try and um, uh, construct a, an algebraic representation of matrices. And then after we've managed to construct um, an algebraic representation of matrices, we are go going to take this representation and see now um, how we can uh, redefine the special matrices that we dealt with in our previous lesson. And then also we are going to see how the operations that we have already came across can be uh, defined using this uh, algebraic uh, form that we are going to look at today. Okay. Okay. So to begin now, uh, one of the things that you should uh, be aware of is that uh, uh, a matrix A, which has uh, n rows and n column, which we, uh, which has order n by m to say, can be generally represented as follows. You see that. So there is a general representation that can be used uh, to represent uh, any matrix which has n rows and m columns. And how we represent this is that um, uh, we write generally the entries of this matrix as follows. So the first entry is always denoted by the uh, lowercase a letter or any letter of your choice. But we put the subscripts uh, 1, 1, to specify that this entry is lying in row number one and column number uh, one as well. Then also we can say one, two, to specify that uh, uh, this entry lies in, in row number one and then column number two. And this can go on so far up until we get to the last uh, entry in, the mole in, the, in this row, which will be the entry I1M. So this can continue going like this whereby uh, the elements which lie in this column uh, they can be represented as 2 1 going so forth up until we get to since we have n rows here uh, it means uh, at the end of the day here we'll have m1 because uh, the this row at the at the end will be n and then it goes on like that then in the diagonal here we'll have a22 and this will continue up until we reach uh, uh, the last entry that side which will be the entry nm and this is the a general way of representing any matrix block you see that so any matrix block that you can think of uh, it can be represented in general uh, uh, in this way that we have displayed here you see that but now uh, if we are to perform some algebra um, uh, with this kind of object which is not compact uh, you will find that uh, the, all the theories that uh, we want to write concerning a uh, matrices they will become very ugly so you will find that um, uh, this is uh, something that uh, we don't stick to every time when we are uh, taking matrices and trying to represent them in algebraic form so what you uh, when you study this matrix block uh, that sits on the inside, one thing that you will see is that uh, all elements that lie within this bracket, they all take the form ij instructor, where i and j uh, take certain values which lie within a, a given uh, range. So from this fact that we can see that uh, uh, this aij can stand for any of the entries that reside within this bracket, uh, it then gives us an idea on how actually we can then come up with a, a, a nice compact way of representing matrices. You see that. So uh, from now on, uh, in linear algebra, uh, matrices are going to be represented as follows. You see that. So all matrices, 
such as a uh, we will start to represent them as below you see so all matrices such as this one that we've described we are going to start representing them as below so every time when you have a matrix if you want to represent any matrix in algebraic form we use this notation whereby we open a bracket and we put a i j on the inside where i a, 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 a i j stand for the representative of all the elements that form a matrix block because if you look at the top we have seen that all the entries that um uh, make up a certain matrix they all take the same structure which is the aij structure so we are just going to take that and use it as a representative of the whole matrix and to do so we are going to then stick to this notation you see that so every time when you are to represent uh, a ma any matrix in a general form then this is how you're going to write it you see that so ie uh, if uh, maybe you have a matrix b uh, also it's going to be just written as bij and if the matrix C also is going to be written as bracket C, I, J. And this is how we're going to continue for all the different matrices that we are going to be uh, coming across. You see, so this is the standard notation that is used mostly in many different textbooks. And we are still going to uh, stick to this uh, notation even ourselves. And then there are times whereby you don't want to actually uh, uh, talk about the whole matrix as a whole but you want to talk maybe about a specific entry then what you should know is that uh, the entries of any matrix say a in this case uh, are represented using a i j without the brackets you see that so this is what we're gonna do uh, right now uh, is that uh, there are times where you want to, to speak about the whole matrix then we use that notation which is the uh, the bracket a i j notation but when you want to refer to only the entries of a matrix uh, especially individually then you just remove the bracket and use the AIJ notation, which is outside the bracket, which is not inside any bracket. So the bracket, every time when we put bracket around AIJ, we take that as the representative of the whole matrix. But if you want to talk about entries or about the intrinsic nature of all the entries that make up a particular matrix, then you have to use the AIJ notation, which is outside the brackets, as we have seen. You see. So, yeah. Uh, this is the notation uh, that you have to now um, familiarize yourself with. And then, uh, besides just familiarizing yourself with this notation, also you have to learn how to use it. You see. So, in uh, to, uh, as a part of this lesson, what we're going to be learning today is to learn how to actually uh, use this notation effectively. Uh, because uh, the expectation uh, from most uh, examiners is that you must be able to actually uh, describe uh, any matrix uh, which is given maybe numerically uh, using this kind of notation. And we're going to see how to do something like that as we proceed with the lesson. You see that. So, okay. Uh, now we have the notation in place. Now let's see uh, what else to, to do. You see that. So now as a way of practicing how to effectively use this notation, uh, we are going to uh, look at the special matrices that uh, we did discuss uh, in the previous lesson, uh, uh, which was the introduction to this subject. Uh, we are going to then start describing all those uh, different types of matrices uh, using this kind of uh, notation or device that we have constructed so that we can see how exactly it works you see that so what we're gonna say now is redefining the spatial matrices using algebraic notation
So this special representation that we have uh, so far constructed, it is known as the algebraic representation of matrices. So now we want to see how exactly uh, it can be put into use uh, uh, by uh, redefining or redescribing uh, the different matrices that we talked about yesterday. So the first one that we're going to, to look at is um, uh, the zero matrix. You see that? So what is a zero matrix? So uh, to describe uh, a zero matrix using this notation, this is how we go. So if A, AIJ, is a zero matrix then a i j is equal to zero for all i j do you see that uh, but um, uh, but formally if a maybe which is an n by m matrix equals to a i j is a zero matrix then we have that a i j is equals to zero uh, for all uh, i which range from one to less than n and for all j which range from 1 to less than m so this is how you will actually uh, def uh, dis uh, define a matrix or a zero matrix using this notation that we have uh, already introduced you see that since uh, we know that uh, a zero matrix is uh, one in which is such that all entries are zero so if we are to put that in algebraic language this is how we write it uh, we say that uh, a i j is equal to zero for all i ranging from 1 to n because i specifies a certain, a, a, a certain row within a matrix and for all j uh, where j specify a, a, a certain column within a matrix like that so this is how you will define a zero matrix using the algebraic language you see that now that we have seen how we, we will go about defining a zero matrix let's move on and see how we can describe even more matrices so the next one that we want to look at is two, the identity matrix. How can we define an identity matrix in this algebraic notation? You see that? So if, if A, which is AIJ, is an identity matrix, Um, matrix so let's say it's an n by n matrix so if a which is a square matrix uh, is an identity matrix uh, then uh, this is the case so a i j can uh, take two different things it can be one when i is equals to j uh, and it's zero every time when i is not equal to j you see that so for all i and j ranging from one less than n so this is how you will actually uh, define what an identity matrix is you see that because we know that um, a, an identity it is one along the leading diagonal so if you look at uh, the index labels of the diagonal you will see that uh, it is it is the case that uh, the first index and the second one they're always the same uh, along the diagonal you see so this is how one defines then an identity matrix using the this notation that we, we have so far introduced and then to practice more let's talk also about uh, what we call this uh, symmetric and and anti-symmetric matrices so symmetric matrix so how will you define a symmetric matrix uh, in using this uh, kind of language 
that you, we have uh, already introduced. So a symmetric matrix is, is, uh, is defined as follow. So if A, which is, remember it has to be an, a, a square matrix again. So if A, which is AIJ, is a symmetric matrix, then we have that. So if A is a symmetric matrix, then we have that. Uh, Aij is equals to Aji uh, for all i and j less than 1, greater or equal to 1 and less than n, uh, such that i is not equal to j. You see that? So every time when i is not equal to j, it means we are talking about non-diagonal elements. You see that? So um, a matrix, for it to be symmetric, uh, this is how we define it. So a matrix is said to be symmetric when it is the case that aij is equal to aji for all ij which uh, greater than 1, less than n, such that i is not equal to j. You see? So this is what we call a symmetric matrix, like that. Now that we have seen how to define a symmetric matrix, um, how then do we define an anti-symmetric matrix? So let's look at the uh, definition of an anti-symmetric matrix. You see that? So. Uh, if A is uh, which has to be an n by n matrix again is anti-symmetric then we have that Aij is equal to minus Ji uh, for all I j greater or equal to 1, less than or equal to n, uh, such that i is not equal to j, you see. So this is what we call an anti-symmetric matrix. So using this notation that we have described, we can define an anti-symmetric matrix as follows. So it is the one for which a i j is equal to the negative of a j i, where for all i and j which range from 1 to n, such that i is not equal to j, which means this condition has to hold true for non-diagonal elements only, you see. So uh, this is how this notation is used to describe matrices. Then uh, to, to continue practicing it, let's look also at, um, at uh, looking at uh, different types of matrices that we can also use uh, this notation. So, so far we have talked about uh, symmetric, anti-symmetric, or let's, let's talk about diagonal matrices now. Okay, so diagonal matrices. Do you see that? So a matrix A, which is n by n also, and equal to aij, is said to be a diagonal matrix if we have that. So we say a matrix is a diagonal matrix if we have that aij is equal to zero for all i not equal to j with both i and j ranging from one to n like that you see so this is how we define a diagonal matrix we want all non-diagonal elements to be zero so that's why we say for all i not equal to j so if this is the case 
then uh, we say um, uh, this is a diagonal matrix you see so you see now uh, that uh, uh, the notation that we have so far introduced it allows us to uh, to do a lot of things uh, with the matrices it allows us to to give a a, a, a more compact way of uh, describing matrices uh, so that now uh, the object that we use for description can be used also uh, to do some algebra with matrices you see so far that's what we have seen so it is very good and excellent to know also how to write down this definition uh, on your own so also you should write them in a way you understand them in your own words but you must make sure that they're accurate because the way I wrote them here is not the way you will find them in any book. It's a matter of writing them according to how you understand it. So you can picture first the matrix and see how you can interpret that using this kind of notation that we have described here. You see. Okay. Now that we have uh, seen uh, how this machinery uh, can be used to describe matrices, it will be good also to see then how matrix operations are defined using this machinery so let's see now how to uh, redefine our operations using this you see that so matrix operation in algebraic form so now let's look at how to deal with matrix operations in this algebraic form so how does it work so the first operation that we want to deal with is uh, addition and subtraction so how do, do we define addition and subtraction now using this notation you see that so uh, if a is an n by m matrix which is a i j and at the same time we have a matrix b which is still an n by m matrix which is also represented as b i j then we have the following then we have the following so a uh, plus b is defined as a i j plus b i j you see, for all i, j, ranging uh, from what? Sorry, I can't write them combined now. So for all uh, i, which range from 1 to n, and for all j, which range from 1 to m. So this is how you define uh, addition and even subtraction again same thing so you can put the negative so what this notation is trying to tell us is that uh, uh, if you want to define addition you just uh, write it as the addition of uh, what we call this you can write this as the addition of the representatives because aij is a representative this side and bij is a representative so the reason why we put the, these together is because Every time when I, I specify what these indices are, then you will see that uh, you will have you will always have corresponding elements adding all the time or separating. So this is how addition is defined uh, using this notation. Now that we have seen how addition is defined using this notation, uh, let's see now how one can go about describing scalar multiplication instead. You see that. So how can one dis, uh, define something like scalar multiplication? So let's look, talk about two scalar multiplication. So suppose A, which is an M by N matrix, is a matrix and lambda is an element of real numbers then we define 
the scalar metrication as follows. You see that? So uh, the way we define scalar metrication, we define it as follows. So it is the product of lambda and a n by m, which is defined as bracket lambda a pi j. You see that? So for all i greater than 1, less than n, and for all j greater than 1, less than m. So this is how we define scalar multiplication. So in scalar multiplication, the lambda multiplies each and every entry of the matrix. That's why we put the lambda inside the bracket to mean whatever entry that you, you describe, the lambda will always multiply it like that. You see? So this is how scalar multiplication is defined uh, using this uh, uh, tool that we have, or this representation that we have introduced. Then uh, the other operation that you also want to uh, represent using this notation is a matrix multiplication, the multiplication of matrices. So how does this one work? So matrix multiplication. You see that? So this one, it is one of the operations that you must make sure that you know how to represent in algebraic format most of the time, because it always pops up quite often in many proofs that uh, you will encounter in linear algebra. So you have to make sure you, you, you know very well how to write down or to represent a matrix product uh, using uh, algebraic notation. So now we are going to see how we write that. You see that. So if uh, A, which is an N by A matrix, which is represented by AIJ, and B, which is also an M by an L matrix, which is represented by BIJ, a matrices then we define the multiplication of matrices as follows to be so a b which is the product of matrices uh, it is defined as the sigma uh, for all k of a i k to b k j like that you see so uh, every time when you want to represent the multiplication of two matrices this is how we represent it you see this is how we represent it uh, we represent it uh, just uh, as you can see so uh, you have a sigma notation which is defined or in terms of the variable k and uh, if you look uh, next to the um, sigma notation we have the two representative of the two matrices being multiplied uh, written together in a just a just a post way and if you look uh, closely uh, you will see that uh, uh, here the in index uh, that is used at the end of, of uh, the representative of the first matrix, it is the same index that is used as, as the starting index of the second representative. So this is how a uh, matrix multiplication is represented uh, in algebraic notation. You see that. So you must make sure that uh, you know very well how to represent this kind of uh, product uh, most of the time you see that so make sure that you are well aware of how exactly uh, these things work you see that and um, 
this k that already we have here uh, this k will always range between n and less than l you see so this k will always range between there it will always range between uh, n and it will always also it will always be greater than a equal to n but less than or equal to l uh, this is how it works uh, all the time when we are dealing with the multiplication of matrices you see so yeah i think now we have managed to uh, do a representation of everything that we covered uh, yesterday uh, when it uh, comes to to this uh, language so i think uh, now uh, there are some things that uh, i will want to add additionally uh, which also are good if you you may know quite earlier before we we are to encounter them at a later stage you see and what we want to talk about at this point in time uh, is something that is called the trace of a matrix. Uh, the trace of a square matrix. So that's what we want to talk about at this point in time. So what exactly is the trace? You see that? So if A is a square matrix, uh, then we define the trace of A. We define the trace of A as the sum of the leading diagonal elements you see that so uh, one of the things that you are always interested in when working with matrices is uh, uh, is there a way which is possible of associating a matrix with a number you see that so there are many different uh, ways in which uh, we can associate a matrix with a fixed number and one of those ways is by using the trace you see that so the trace is just a, a, a simple way of saying a, a sum of all the diagonal elements so if you add all the elements along the leading diagonal the value that you get is what we call the trace you see that so uh, putting now in algebraic form how can we define the trace you see that so uh, we denote Uh, the trace of A uh, using TRA and algebraically the trace is defined to be So this thing that is called the trace of A, when A is, a, is an A by A matrix, it is just the sum of for, for all K of A, K, K. You see that? So that's how the trace is defined. So it is defined as the sum of all the diagonal elements. So A, it is the a defined algebraically as sigma for all K from uh, of a k k where now we have made the subscripts to be the same because we want to make sure that uh, every time i define k it picks out a diagonal element uh, within the matrix you see so that's what the trace really is so to practice it let's just look at one example because one example is very fine to 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 learn about the trace so a typical example will be a given the matrix A is equal to 3, 2, 5, minus 1, 4, 7, 2, 1, 3. Uh, find the trace of A. 
you see that find the trace of a so how do we find the, the, the trace of a so the solution to this uh, is a it's a very uh, simple one so how do we go about solving this so we know that uh, the trace of any matrix it is the sum of diagonal elements which means you just have to take uh, these elements and add them together in that plane. So you will add three and add four and add three. So you will get 10 in that addition, which gives us the trace of that particular matrix. So that's what we mean every time when we talk about the trace. It means the things that lie along the diagonal. You see. So now, uh, uh, this um, uh, thing that we've defined, that is called the trace, uh, it has the following properties. You see that? So the trace has the following properties. So what are the properties of the trace? So the properties of the trace there is follows. So uh, the trace of a sum of matrices A plus B is actually equal to the trace of A plus the trace of B. That's what the trace is actually. You see that? So that's uh, how we actually define the trace. So the, the, the trace of the sum is equal to the sum of the traces. So it's a very nice property to be aware of. And then again, uh, the trace of lambda times A, which is when a matrix is multiplied, is just, just the lambda times trace of A with lambda and element of real numbers. So this object that is known as the trace, it has these properties that you must make sure you are also aware and be able to apply every time when needed. You see, so these are some very nice properties. Um, so uh, now I'm just stating these, but as a practice of uh, learning how to use this notation that we have uh, so far been introducing uh, throughout the whole of this section, it will be good if you can actually do a proof of these two results. But uh, in our next video, we are actually going to learn uh, on how to do all these things, uh, the proofs of all these results. You, and many other results that are associated with uh, all the other uh, operations that we have looked uh, at uh, using this uh, algebraic notation of matrices that we have so far devised. So we'll see how it works. But before you get to see that, it will be good if you are to try it out on your own so that when you see how it's done, uh, at least already you, you are familiar or you are checking yourself if you've been going the right way or not. You see. Then lastly, uh, what I would like to end this lesson uh, with today is uh, also uh, another operation of matrices, uh, which is known as the transpose of a matrix. You see, so that's what we want to look at right now. Uh, okay sorry about that okay so uh, what exactly is uh, the transpose of a matrix you see that so uh, if a is a matrix is an n by m matrix and if you change the rows of the matrix a to become columns or columns to become rows
then uh, the new matrix obtained is known as the trace of matrix A. You see that? So uh, there is an operation of matrices, uh, which is the operation switch rows to columns or columns to rows. You see that? So if you take a, a particular matrix and you change its rows to become columns, then you obtain a new matrix, which is completely different from the previous one that we have. Then uh, what you should know now know is that, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, what you should now know is that the new matrix that you obtain is called the transpose. Uh, I wrote trace here, sorry. So we call this the transpose, not the trace. We call this the transpose of matrix A. You see, so when you change rows to become columns, you get the transpose of matrix A. So what you should also know also additionally is this, you see. So uh, the transpose of A is denoted by AT, you see that. So if you, have, you are given a matrix A, uh, if you transpose it, uh, the best way that uh, we choose to represent the, that transpose is by using a to the power uppercase t like that you see the reason why we choose to keep a is because uh, the transpose is always unique uh, uh, for a particular matrix you see that so uh, it is an operation which pro produces something which is unique so which means you can't have two different matrices which have the same transpose. It's impossible for that to happen. So that's why we tend to keep the letter A uh, to show that uniqueness, you see. So that's what the transpose really is, you see. And the transpose has the following properties. So this operation that is called the transpose, it has the following properties also that you must be aware of. So what are the uh, are those uh, properties? So the, the first property that you should know is that if you have an A matrix, which is already a transpose, if you transpose again, you get the matrix A back. So which means the transpose of the transpose is the original matrix. So those are some rules that you should know. Then again, what you should know is that the transpose of the sum, so if you have A plus B, and you want to find the transpose of the result, it is just the sum of the transposes, like that. Then thirdly, if you have a two product of matrix, so let's say this product exists, if you want to find the, the, the transpose of this product, it is the same as saying the product of B transpose and A transpose. So. So here it's very important to look at what is happening. So take note of the order here, because you will see that uh, uh, when you are taking the individual transposes as a product, the order is reversed. You see that? So B comes first, the transpose of B comes first, followed by the transpose of A as a product. So um, these are properties. Uh, that you should uh, be aware of. So in our next uh, lesson, we are going to learn how to prove these using uh, our tools. Now it is uh, very good just to be aware of these and also learn how to find these numerically. So to practice the transpose, let's just look at one example and then that's it for today. So let's uh, see. So a, a typical example that you can look at will be as follows. So given the matrix A, which is three minus one, two, four, two, seven, find A transpose. So how can we obtain A transpose? So to find A transpose, this is how we proceed. Uh, 
here a transpose is equal to what so remember what you do when you're transposing is you take a row so which means i'll take this row and write it as a column so when i write this row as a column it will come here and become three negative one two and then i go again i extract the next coming row and also i write it as a column which is four two seven so i take columns and write them into rows like that so this is what we call a, a transpose you see so it's very easy to calculate the transpose and this is how you do it otherwise yeah uh thanks for watching guys so if you are new to this channel uh kindly hit the subscribe button so that you can miss uh, you cannot miss out when new videos come in because this is going to be a full algebra series uh, covering everything that you will need to know in linear algebra otherwise yeah see you some other time bye